All right. Stand up for a moment. Put your hands on your chest here as you stand between heaven and earth. And using your voice as a vibrant resonator, see if you can resonate open the corridor of your heart all the way from front to back, going, ah.
practice is not snapping out of it. And if there's anything happening right now that you would like to keep on doing, even as I go on to speak of anything else, you get to keep on doing it. If there's anything you would like to pledge to your subconscious and say to your subconscious, subconscious, let's keep on doing it. Please help me keep on doing this even when I'm not thinking about it. Let it be part of me. You can do that. And if there's anything in you that has already benefited, one of the best ways to anchor and extend the healing is gratitude. It doesn't matter who you're grateful to or exactly what you're grateful about. The physiology of gratitude takes healing deeper. So you can do any or all of those things as you return to your seat. And I try to figure this out. Oh, go that or that's what it says. This So now we are able to come to the third concept needed in order to understand the cancer process, and that is latency. A very important concept in Chinese medicine. And there are there is a lot to say about latency, and I will not talk about it all. It's a big topic. There are different things that can be held in latency. There are different places where things can be held in latency. Um, and then they remain unresolved and reemerge later. For instance, arthritis. Most people's arthritis as they get old, they didn't contract that when they got old. They went bungee jumping in an ice cold river when they were in their 20s or something like that. Took the cold, could not clear the cold from their system, but had enough vibrancy of jing to be able to throw it into latency. So, okay, I can't deal with this, I can't overcome it, I can't clearly purge, I don't have enough upright chi right now to deal with this. I can't fight this battle and win. Healthy fight. Can't fight this battle and win. It's chef, I, I, I just don't have the resources. Put it in the freezer, leave it there. There are many illnesses that come as we age, that aren't really coming as, they, as we age. We, we got them ages ago. Processes started long ago, but our jing, which is necessary, jing and yin, to hold things in latency, starts to run out. And then up comes whatever it was. At least that's one of the ways that um, that things come out of latency. Speaking specifically about cancer, it would be some form of insult. It could be on the weight level an environmental insult that we don't know how to deal with. Toxic chemicals, the, uh, electromagnetic fields that are very disruptive, anything that makes our being go, I'm under threat! What do I do? And the answer is, I don't know. I, I can't do anything with it. Ah. Or on an emotional level, something happens. Oh. I had an experience. It was a good number of years ago. Now it's probably been about 10 years. It's been 10 years. That I was running an herb program that that was like my life, my love, my investiture, my, I gave it everything I had. It was the beauty that I wanted to create in the world. I, 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 it meant everything to me. And details not necessary, but I was right in the middle of teaching a four day section on the metal element. And I had just taught the first morning when I was called into the administrator's office and was given news that felt basically meant this herb program is going to be destroyed. And it wasn't done nicely. And I remember what went on inside of me. 
That was a game level breaking point. My, I, I felt like you're destroying my child. You're trying to kill my child. <coughs> and I could feel the turmoil of where do I go with, I don't know how to exist as myself in this moment. That's what I mean by breaking point. Like, I, I, any Thea Elijah that I have ever been has no resources to cope with this. And it was very clear. One possibility of where I could go at breaking point was evil. And I thought about it. I thought, you know, I could walk out right now, not teach the other three and a half days, and who are they going to get to replace me? And what will the accreditors say about it? I could throw, just by not going back to work, I could destroy this school. Thought about what it would be like to lock them in their homes and set them on fire. I, you know, I thought, I thought about these things. I definitely thought about these things. And the coin kept flipping inside. And what I actually decided to do was go back and teach the most kick-ass, amazingly awesome metal element class that I think I ever have in my life. It was incredible. I lived every bit of grief and redemption in metal that extended weekend. That was my choice. However, I did not act on the part of me that would have preferred to destroy the school and then kill them all by fire. I did not act on it, but it did not die. I did not actually divest of it. And that is the sort of situation which becomes like a flipping coin in the small intestine. Who am I? Who am I? Am I the person who chose light and taught the class? I can't quite convince myself of it. Or am I really the evil one? Is that who I really am? I'm just acting nice and virtuous. But really, I am dark and malignant. Is that the truth about me? Or is the truth about me that I have something in me that is dark and malignant, but I am the one who makes the choice to live from the light? I'm not looking for an answer to that externally. But it sent me into a kind of like when the computer can't figure something out, it just goes like, like that. And then have to take the whole thing and basically unresolved, throw the whole thing into latency. That's a great example of where yin level stuff, like I'm at breaking point, I went both ways. Who am I really? I don't know. So we throw that into latency. No answer, but it takes energy to keep that quiet. It takes less energy to keep quiet the unresolved confusions about my identity. And it takes more energy to put into latency the things that, um, I think I'm trying to think of another example. I don't know of one in my life. But the feeling of like, there are times when, oh, I can do minor ones where, where uh, I'm really tired. I really need sleep. And my son chose that night to get some kind of stomach flu and to be puking all night long. There was an animal part of me that wanted to pick him up, take him outside, and put him in the dumpster. I was like, done with you, little animal. <sighs> that kind of low, lower, I hope you're not, this is exactly what everybody thought that I should be drummed out of the profession for. 
that kind of totally low, instinctual, self-serving animal that's just like, ah! kill what bothers me, kill what keeps me from sleep, that's all you are. And can so easily, if we don't have some practice with it, I have a lot of practice with it, <laughs> notice, have that come up in ourselves, be completely horrified by it. Bam! And shove it down. Oh no, I love my child. I, I, they're, I, they're wonderful. I would never have a feeling of my like <laughs> Many of us who are not at home with our own dark side so fear our eruptions of I will kill whatever gets in my way that we just stuff it. Which is why I advise you to start shamelessly getting to know that part of yourself. I'm not asking you to act on it, I really prefer not. But better to not be shocked. There are people who have a lot of innocence, you could say, if denial can be called a form of innocence, about what goes on inside of them. This is dangerous. It is better to know the ways in which you're actually not that nice. Everybody has a part of themselves that wants to survive. It's called a kidney. It's good for a lot of things. It says, my genotype, that's, that's what's important to me. So recognize you have one. Recognize that it acts up sometimes. And better to purge. <coughs> than to throw into latency. We do our best. So <coughs> the day comes when these things start to emerge from latency. Generally, the who am I? Stuff that's just a kind of flipping coin that's still flipping, I don't know who I am is more likely to manifest as dysplasia, as cell chaotic lack of identity. It's mutation, but it's not intelligent. It's just going, what? And what? And who? Huh? Whereas the having gone nasty, being horrified by that, shoving it down, when that starts to come out of latency, that is more likely to be actual malignancy manifesting. It could be erupting from wherever it was held in latency. It could be inside of a tumor, phlegm or blood or a mixture. Phlegm is more the denial and um, blood is more that sense of scar tissue, emotional scar tissue, injury become a monument but it may not be malignant for a long time because the malignancy in it is being held, 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 held in latency. And then this unresolved something that's been there, it can't be held in the freezer anymore. And there you have it. Now, there are two different times that things come out of latency. And in actual cancer treatment, from a Chinese perspective, it makes all the difference in the world why whatever it was came out of latency. The two reasons why things come out of latency is one, as I mentioned before, you don't have that much jing left. You can't keep it in latency anymore. Sorry. There's no more funding for this program. And there it is. The other reason why it might be coming out of latency is because now you have the resources to deal with it. Now you can fight it and win. You, I, I don't know the nature of your practices, so I don't know how much you may have noticed this. I know that in the five element population, where we do a lot of treating us there. This 
happens, I think, a little more than average, which is that what? Just said that you just said. Treating the spirit. That part. Treating the spirit. It's good. I, I'm into it. But yeah. One of the things that sometimes happens is um, clients come to us in great psychological disarray, kind of crazy and really not psychologically very functional, barely hanging in there, a real convoluted mess of a person, and you work with them and work with them and work with them and they get saner and saner and clearer and clearer and more and more stable, and then they come down with some amazing illness on a physical level. I'm getting some nods, yeah. It doesn't happen to everybody, but it certainly happens enough that a person heals and heals and heals and you're going, oh my God, you're going right. Now is the time that you would have breast cancer? Now is the time when you suddenly are having you know, uh, some autoimmune something or other? Now is when you have, suddenly you have type one diabetes? What? Or, or it happens, I've seen this happen also, as soon as someone leaves a dysfunctional marriage, or as soon as someone leaves their abusive family and goes to college, you've finally gotten out of a horrible situation. And the first thing you do is get some terrible illness just when it seems like your life could finally begin. It's not quite what it looks like. What's going on is you've held something in latency. You've held it and held it and held it because your survival was at stake for holding it in latency. And then you got out of that horrible situation. And now you're ready to purge it out. Now you're ready to say, okay, let's deal with the issues. I'm saying it now. I can work with it. And from a Chinese perspective, cancer treatment, when somebody, you have to look at, you can't, you can't just look at the manifestation. You have to look at the history. You have to say, what direction has, was this person moving in? when the illness erupted. If they've been getting better all the time and have just kind of come to a new summit and this emerged, our treatment is focused on clearing, 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 helping all of the malignancy to come up and out and clear it. We do massive amounts of purging and clearing herbs. Yes, tonifying also, because you always want to tonify, you know, because, and also because it just takes a lot of energy to do that much puking, shitting, sweating, and, you know, breaking things down. But that's the focus of treatment, is to say, all right, I'm with you. A lot of tonifying and lung in, stomach in, you know, everything that lubricates and allows things to move, <laughs> dissolve, and be extruded by all the various excretory, eliminatory, means, like, bravo, go team, let's work with it. If the reason why it came out of latency is because of lack of resources to hold it in latency, that's not such a great time to join battle. The person doesn't have enough energy to hold it in latency, they don't have the energy to fight it and win. And so the strategy is to throw it back into latency again. You will be doing some clearing malignancy stuff, but there will be a lot more focus on herbally and acupuncturally connecting with the divergent channels and saying, go back to your cage. Go back. Go back into the cave. We need to send it back in. Send it into remission. Because it's a good idea sometimes to have to not resolve things. Latency is good. It's really a fantastic option to have. Just think how many more machine gun massacres there would be if people didn't have the option of throwing the whole darn thing into latency. It's so great to have somewhere to put things that we do not have the ability to deal with. It makes, it makes the rest of society so much safer. So, okay, we don't have the ability to deal with this. It's erupting. Let's send it back into remission. Let's send it back into latency.
help build the clients to the point where we get so enough wellness that there's naturally a re-eruption, that's different. If you've been with a client and working with them and the cancer has gone into remission, you know that someday it's gonna come back, but that's not a failure. Because you already know what you've got going on here. You're buying time and you're saying to them, let's put your house in order. Let's learn how to die. Let's learn how to deal with our own toxicity. Let's look at our dark side and start to ignore. They, they can be doing all of these things, as well as eating right, sleeping right, exercise, you know, doing what they need to do. Because you're saying to them, prepare for battle. Not now, but prepare. Do the work. And that's not a bad way of life. Then when it comes in its time, you say, okay. And then that's when you use the intense, much more purgative clearing strategies. Am I making sense here? Yeah. It must be understood also, this, this quality of healing in the spirit and then suddenly you get this physical manifestation. It is always better to be sane and physically ill than physically well and insane. Just in terms of survival vector, your sanity, your spirit is of greater value. It's more important. And often the way that healing progresses is from the clearing of the more vital organs to the less vital organs, like, like the people who have asthma and then they have something with their skin. That things will move outward from the more vital organ to the less vital organ. Your shen, your spirit, your sanity is your most vital organ. You need, if you've got that, you've got something way more important. And so part of what happens is now that I'm sane, the illness moves to another level. It's advantageous and it's moving through the levels on its way out. As we begin to get older, as our jing begins to fade anyway, yes, we could look at it from a youth-centric perspective and say, we're getting old, we can't hold things in latency. Surprise, when we least want it and can least deal with it, physically anyway, here comes everything we haven't dealt with before. On the other hand, there's a strong relationship between aging and what I'm going to call wisdom, but it's a very technical term. It's a know thyself term. We talk about body, mind, and spirit being one, and it is sort of, but not exactly. And the older we get, the more obvious that gets. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm nearing 50. My body is clearly not what it was at 20, or even 30, or even 40. If we look just at my body, don't look too hard. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going downhill. It's so clear, though, that my spirit is getting better all the time. I am so much, I would not, I would love to go back to my 20 or 30 year old body, but I would not want to go back to my 20 or 30 year old spirit. Don't tell me that body and spirit are one. Yeah, they are, kind of. But in another way, this body is gonna go. It's already gone. It's going to die. It's becoming realer and realer. I feel myself disintegrate. As my body disintegrates, this is where wisdom comes in. So you can't, it's hard to tell the difference between your spirit and your body when you're young. There really isn't much experiential division. As we get older, we look at our face in the mirror, we go, that is not my face. <laughs> My face has more prominent cheekbones. My face doesn't have like saggy necklines. It's like, that's not my face. The fact that I know that 
means that I know my face. And I know that it's not my body. And as my body ceases to reflect my spirit with that exactness that I had when my jing, physical jing was full, I even more need to move into what I am calling wisdom, knowing who I am, knowing the nature of my jing, knowing the nature of my design, without a reminder in the mirror, without a body to hold me to it. So there is a way in which all the things that come out of latency as we get older, if we're not looking at it in a youth-centric way, there are so many issues that because we actually now know who we are, we are so much more in a position to resolve than when we were young. All that stuff that about the Earth program, all that stuff about Jean who showed up and the, like, there's a degree to which I don't care anymore. Not in a collapsed way, but in an I'm dying anyway kind of way. It's real in a way that it wasn't back. That was in my early 30s that happened with the Earth program. I was such a firebrand. In some ways I still am. But I'm a firebrand that knows that I'm dying. And what's going to remain? And that matters more. So I can look at the whole thing and say, it was awful. But let it, let it go. Hmm? I don't know where that came from. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so we can celebrate in some ways the things that come up as we get older, come out of latency as we get older and say, OK, my body is not as well equipped to heal from this. I really, really need some help there. Possibly I will make it, and possibly I will not physically. But the, as we move as we move things to or, organ, I, I, I'm shy about saying this in a culture that I'm not sure what everybody's belief system is, but I will speak from an ancient Chinese perspective. The body is the part of us that is disposable. It's disposable. That's where we put our garbage. As our spirit begins to emerge, we are, we are getting older, we are going to die anyway. We, are, we, will, we will shuffle off this mortal coil. Like, you don't have to translate Shakespeare. We'll have, we, will, we will, this will go. We have the opportunity to heal the malignancy by letting ourselves sort it out, see who we are, realize what we actually are. A person who has the capacity for malignancy and has chosen to work with it in a particular way. And heal, even if we die. So there is a way in which there is a path home and a worthwhile path, no matter how the equation, how the factors are coming out. We can either be preventive, and the best way to be preventive is to reach total enlightenment now. If you can't quite manage that, we can in every situation that we're not able to die so that only the love can remain, do something from the purging school, get it out of our system. As we keep generating toxin, keep getting it out of our system again. Failing that possibility, we really can't get it out of our system, and we really can't handle it, and we really have lost it and gone over to the dark side, we can throw it into latency. Please do, it beats going out and killing 30 people and then killing yourself. Preserve your sanity and go into denial. It's a great alternative. It's praiseworthy. Everybody who takes their malignancy and turns it into cancer instead of mass murder, I shake their hand. I say thank you. Thank you for being a nice person, a socially responsible person, a person of heart, and say, uh, and then either 
comes the time when it emerges and we work with it, but failing that comes a time when we're falling apart and dying anyway. And we can make the choice to die healed, die healed, die whole, whole, and see cancer as being an opportunity for that kind of healing and a virtuous response to what sometimes can be a very difficult life. Very briefly, cancer, long level illness, when it comes in the way level, this is more environmental toxin. When it comes in on the yin level, this is more emotional, relational toxin. When it comes in on the yuan level, what's happening here is that we have malignancy, we have created do, we throw it into latency inside of ourselves, and then we have children. This is the genetic kind of cancers. All the things that, and, and this is not a nasty thing to do. This is saying things like, I'm a Holocaust survivor. I absolutely cannot cope with it. There is so much evil in the world. I can't figure out how to deal with it without becoming evil. Maybe the next generation can figure it out. And or from the environmental stuff, we're saying, I can't deal with all these frequencies, I can't deal with all these chemicals, I don't know what to do with it. My genotype can't handle it. As I pass on my genotype, I'm passing on a warning label. Warning, here's the things that will make you go ballistic. You need to deal with this. And so frequently, are there people who are very young, and they're children, and some of them may be newborns. They didn't have a chance to generate their own new toxin. But in the hope that, uh, I mean it sounds really strange to say, but in the hope that our children will mutate. Shen genius. In the hope that somehow we will find a way to learn how to work with these things. Our parents say, please, I, I can't do anything. Can you do better? And sometimes we manage it and sometimes we don't but it is at the very least the attempt to say, I can't work with the puzzle, but I want life to continue. Die, 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 let only the love remain. Feng shui, alter, please go ahead and be something unrecognizable to me, maybe not something that looks like my child exactly, but that has a new possibility. So even that, even when it doesn't work out very well. It was life's attempt, it is life's attempt, to say, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna do this better? What now? <laughs>